Protesters gathered outside the government palace are shouting for the governor, Sanjo Correa, to be put in prison for the embezzlement of public funds. Sanjo is escorted into a room where, upon hearing threatening gunshots, hides under a table. Tear gas is emitted and a masked person comes and grabs Sandro. Taking the story from the beginning, the people in Brazil are enraged with the political chaos and corruption. A special arms division unit arrives at the governor Sandro Correa's house with a warrant to arrest him. Sandro is rightfully accused for taking a lot of money from health care, leaving many citizens at the mercy of poorly equipped and understaffed hospitals. Miguel, an honest and hardworking cop, interrogates Sandro for the embezzlement and also for a well-known case of political fraud and manipulation. He plays an incriminating recording, but then Sandro's lawyer appears and Miguel and his partner, Edu, walk away. After work, Miguel is having dinner with his little daughter, Alice. His ex-wife, Isabella, comes by and tells him that they go to the stadium and watch the football game tomorrow. Meantime, Sandro is sure that this whole business is going to blow out soon and promises to hit back at those who dared to harm him. Miguel is upset when he finds out about the relocation of the governor to a low-security penitentiary facility. He leaves work early to go to the match with his daughter. While they get stuck in traffic, they decide to walk to the stadium. Suddenly, Alice gets shot in the chest by an unknown shooter. Miguel takes her to the hospital, but there aren't enough doctors to save her. Miguel feels helpless as he watches his little girl dying in front of his eyes. Isabella comes and collapses in his arms, crying for Alice. Soon after this, Sandro is released from prison. Back in the present, Governor Sandro talks to the press while protesters are outside the government palace shouting for his immediate incarceration. Miguel is among the crowd wearing a hood. He walks towards the police troops and fights with them before getting hit in the stomach with a tear gas canister. A gas mask falls close by. Miguel puts it on and turns on the night vision. He takes down one by one the police troops and quickly makes his way inside the palace. Sandro is being put into a room for better protection and once he hears the gunshots from Miguel's firearm eliminating his bodyguards, he hides under the table. Miguel throws tear gas and enters the room. He finds Sandro under the table and beats him to death. Having taken his revenge, Miguel mends his wounds at his house. The police are investigating the murder of the governor. One of the protesters that have been arrested sees Miguel and recognizes him as a masked vigilante. The police chief asks from the officers to interrogate the protesters, hoping to find the governor's murderer among them. Miguel talks with the young woman who has seen him in order to hide his tracks. Her name is Lena, and she reveals to Miguel that she has seen him the night before, and also that she has recorded him with her mobile phone. Miguel sees the footage and releases Lena, who returns to her workplace, a comic book shop. Miguel is viewing the video when he hears Isabella coming to visit. He doesn't open the door and later on meets Lena. He asks for her help to find the rest that were involved in the big case of corruption by searching on Sandro's laptop. Lena agrees in exchange for her freedom and manages to retrieve a bunch of files which Miguel uses to spread his revenge on the rest of the culprits. He sets up his base of operations in an abandoned basement and soon enough begins his action. Miguel puts on his fabled gas mask and his first victim is the mayor. One by one, people involved in crimes against the citizens are killed by the masked vigilante whom the media call the Awakener. As the police are at their wit's end, Miguel pays a visit to Lena in her work and asks for her assistance once again. It do. Miguel's partner thinks that the Awakener is a police officer based on his professionalism. Lena visits her mother in prison and tells her that she will get her out soon. Her mother, though, isn't that confident. Miguel plans to hit the corrupted politicians at the place they meet. With Lena's help, he succeeds in infiltrating the building without being noticed. Idu, in the meantime, finds a lead as to where the Awakener will strike next. An illegal transaction takes place at the building, but Miguel runs into Edu. He runs away and a wild chase takes place in which Miguel gets shot in the shoulder. Back in his hideout, Lena comes and stitches Miguel's wound. Antero Gomes, who pulls the strings on every unlawful act in Brazil, worries about the breach. He orders the police chief, one of his own obviously, 
to pull his men out of every investigation regarding his involvement. Yet Miguel is determined to bring down Arturo and wants the mantle of the Awakener again. He lies in wait outside Antero's house and aims at him. But things take a turn for the worse when Miguel accidentally kills Antero's son. Antero Gomes decides then to run for president. And at the same time, he unleashes his men to find and kill the murderers of his son. One of his men finds Lena's workplace and kills her colleague. Lena freaks out and runs to Miguel, not knowing that the killer has followed her there. A gunfight ensues in the basement. Miguel tells Lena to run away and he takes down the assailants. Antero's right hand, however, grabs Lena and holds her at gunpoint. He tells Miguel to kill Julie Machado at the presidential debate if he wants Lena to stay alive. Miguel complies and goes to the building. In the meantime, Edu deducts that Miguel is the Awakener and informs Isabella about it. Antero Gomes and Julie Machado debate and Miguel prepares to assassinate Julie. Edu stops him just in time before he pulls the trigger and then the two of them fight. Miguel takes off his mask and says that he had to do something about these criminals. Edu tries to talk him out of it, saying that this won't bring his daughter back. Miguel picks up his rifle and a shot is fired. Lena then manages to stab the man who is keeping her captive and kill him with his gun. Miguel is arrested and put behind bars. Isabella comes to visit and asks him why he killed all those people, but Miguel remains silent. After the elections, Antero Gomes becomes the new president. Miguel is seen working out in his cell until he is taken to the interrogation room where he is beaten up by his former colleagues. The chief tells him that he was fighting on the wrong side all this time. He orders his men to finish him, but one of the agents has specific orders from the new president to make him suffer. Miguel fights back and manages to strangle the agent, gaining back his freedom. He fills up a bag with guns and ammunition and heads out for the final act of his revenge. Edu finds out about this and goes to stop him. Miguel leaves a trail of fresh corpses behind him as he moves towards his last target. He reaches Antero's office and it's now him against the president alone. Antero shoots, but accomplishes nothing. Miguel takes off his mask and blows Antero's brain out with his shotgun. Soon, armed men barge into the room. Miguel takes a detonator out of his pocket and sets off the bomb inside his car. A massive explosion brings down the presidential palace with Miguel in it. Edu is too late to prevent this. In the end, one man did what others couldn't even dare of thinking going against the corrupt system that makes the poor poorer and the rich richer. Under the debris of the building, a firefighter finds Miguel's mask. In a post credit scene, the Awakener fires with his rifle at an unknown target, showing that he is still alive and always ready to punish the wicked. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. I'll be back with another interesting movie recap. Until then, take care.